How many of you are in connection with someone with Crohn's disease? Show of hands. Very interesting, because I too know someone with Crohn's disease. I would like to share with you his story. Before he was diagnosed with Crohn's in 2013, he was living his life, enjoying all sorts of junky food. He loved his weeknight pizzas and his ice cream dessert. He especially loved to go on the tennis court and play tennis. And he was living a very happy life, borderline obesity. Now, the fall, um, the summer of 2013, he started experiencing cramps and diarrhea. And it was just such a shock. Um, he could never look at food the same way. Every time he went to take a bite of food, he'd run straight to the bathroom within seconds of having swallowed it. And even if he could keep the food down for two minutes, it wasn't long before it came back out the way it went in. Even when he went to the tennis court to do his favorite thing, two minutes into the warm-up, he had to stop because his cramps were hurting him too much. Mentally, there was a time where he felt trapped between his bedroom and his bathroom. He missed nearly two months of school and he was too afraid to go to school because of these conditions. From those two months of summer, and school, he lost almost 25 pounds of weight from his conditions. He spent those two months at Shio getting several tests. These included imaging, colonoscopies, and blood works. Very scary for him. And then it was the fall of 2013 when doctors told him he had Crohn's disease. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Crohn's disease, Crohn's disease is a chronic illness when there's a lot of irritation in the lining of the gut. And this is what doctors call inflammatory bowel disease, IBD for short. There are two types of IBDs, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. People usually get diagnosed with Crohn's uh, in between the ages of 12 to 30. Although Crohn's can be found, uh, although the Crohn's can be found in between the mouth to the rectum, which doctors usually refer to as cheek to cheek. Usually, um, it's most commonly found in the ileum, which you can see up on the board in the small intestine. So, just to show you how aggressive this disease is, up on the board, we have two pictures. One of a normal ileum, and one with Crohn's. Just visually looking at those two pictures, the one on the right with Crohn's, you can see the, the, the white, the pus. You can just see all the ulcers. You can see how it's eroded, that little gap. All the, the regular tissue, the mucosa, that's all gone now. And you can just see the blood. You can just see the hemorrhaging and the lining of the gut. And then you look back to the left, and you can visibly see right through it. The difference is night and day. Now, how does one ileum turn from such a beauty to such a disaster? Now. Now, doctors believe that Crohn's is, is when it can be triggered by several factors, such as environmental causes, um, stress, unhealthy eating, and possibly genetics. And unfortunately, there's no cure to the disease. Doctors can only control it. And what I mean by control is, take people with diabetes, for example. They take insulin. The insulin can help control their blood sugar to keep it at a level, but won't actually get rid of the diabetes itself, right? Now, if you haven't already guessed it by now, the person in the story was me. Once again, up on the board, we have two images. The one on the left is me before I got Crohn's disease. The one on the right is me after my colonoscopy when doctors told me I had Crohn's disease. Once again, visually, on the left, I'm smiling, I'm happy, I'm healthy minus the nine or 10 extra pounds. Um, and then on the right, the difference once again, I'm, I've lost my 25 pounds. I don't have cheeks anymore. My face is pale. I'm frowning. I have dark circles on the, under my eyes. That is a sign of someone who is chronically unwell and unhappy. Now, in my world, food was my life. 
unhealthy foods, and just laziness was my life. And I was told that I would have to take medications, more needles, more blood works, and completely change my diet. How would you feel? Now, 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 I, I had two options at this point when doctors told me I had Crohn's. I could stay the same or I could change for the better. I initially wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then I realized that she was right and I needed to change. And initially, knowing my very stubborn personality, I knew it was going to be hard. But once again, my parents and my doctors had my back. So I said, let's go for it. Why not change? Now, coming to this and looking back to what I did, I realized that life can present you with many hurdles, many problems that are very hard to face and even try to overcome. But what we don't do, we have to learn to face it, adapt to that hurdle, and eventually change yourself to get over the hurdle and get ready for the next one. Now, I was willing to change. So what's next? Well, you need to set up a sort of strategy. I need to have a plan to go forward. I can't just go for it. So I can't really suggest a plan that will work for all of you, but to make your own, I like to refer to it as my acronym. The four K's. You have to know yourself, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, and know your help and support. Now, I knew myself. I knew I wanted to get well. I knew I wanted to get back on the tennis court. I knew that having Crohn's wasn't right for me. And I knew that I was ready for change. Now, my weakness, one word that sums it up, fear. I was terrified of having another cramp. Just the thought of it, even now, I'm still scared. And I had a major phobia of needles, which was really bad. Um, and my strength was the, other, was the other one. I just wanted to get well. I didn't want to have to stop playing tennis because of my Crohn's. I didn't want to have to miss any more months of school. I just wanted to be myself. I wanted to stand on my two feet and still be happy. And my support, my parents, my doctors, including my gastroenterologist at Chio, and Ashbury, my teachers, my friends, their support meant everything to me. I had a strategy and I was ready, I was confident. I said, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna get over my hurdle. Now, when I tell people I have Crohn's, they usually end up somewhere saying, oh, I feel so sorry for you, hopefully you get well, something along those lines. Although Crohn's is something very bad to have for, the, for any human at any age, I'd like to say that having Crohn's disease was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Why? Because had I not had Crohn's, I would not be the person that I am today. I would not be so aware about the food that I eat. I would not care about my body. And I would not realize how important it is to make sure you take value of your life. And why call my eating habits a diet? I enjoy food the way I eat it. And that's why I keep eating it. So I don't call it a diet, I call it my lifestyle. I've been eating food the way I eat it for the past four years. And that's not gonna change. I like food, I like, the, I like what I eat. So I will continue eating, it's my lifestyle, not a diet. Now, I'm on this stage right now, because we all have hurdles. Every one of you has one, whether it's big or small, has a hurdle. But how many of you will actually go that extra mile and jump it, go for the change? Right. Now, I'm here to encourage you to change. Me, with my stubborn personality, with all odds against me, I jumped in. I went for it and I did it. If I could do it, then there should be no excuse for any of you not to try. I appreciate you all listening to me and I'd like to finish with this one quote. Nobody can change you unless you change yourself. <laughs>